What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Dude, we're not doing any bikes in this little series. This, this, this is a little series all on its own, all to do with my new toy, which is a Boxford AUD lathe. Let me show you. Right, so this is the lathe. Um, as you can see, it's, oh, it don't look too bad. However, um, it hasn't seen a great deal of love recently and it's been stored in a shed where the fella also did wood turning. So it's covered in sawdust and that's got basically everywhere. So in this little series, what I'm gonna be doing is pulling the whole thing apart, literally limb from limb, and we're gonna restore it back to former glory. It's a cracking little bit of kit, but it needs a bit of love to, um, to do the do and be its best. So that's what it's getting. So I was grubbing around on the web, on uh, YouTube and all that other stuff, I can't really find any videos on how to do this, so I'm doing it anyway. I figure I might as well just document it because it might help somebody out if they end up getting one. Um, what's in there? That's just a through hole. Right, so bearings on the end. Okay. Um, I'm not a machinist. I'm a home gamer. I'm a welder by trade. So this is all going to be new to me. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just an electric motor down the bottom that's connected to all the rest of it, which is purely mechanical by a belt. So it's just stuff that bolts together. There's not really that much electrics to get involved in. So what the plan is, we're going to have this apart, literally limb from limb. The whole lot's coming apart. Everything's going to get cleaned. Um, we'll check everything for wear and tear and make sure we're all good there as well. Um, and then we're going to rebuild it and it's going to live in the corner over there that I've already cleared a hole out. So this, we're starting out with this assembly. This is basically the, um, the main screw for the cross feed. Um, there is a casting that's missing off it, which I still need to source, but the fella had this as a spare and it's in similar nick to the rest of it. So to start off with, I'm just going to see how clean I can get it. What works best on all this surface rust? We've got a few different options there as well. Uh, I do have a parts washer. It's only a little one, but it's a parts washer. I've also got an ultrasonic bath. And we've also got a big tub up there that sometimes we use to do the citric acid trick. So we might end up doing that as well. But I just want to see what approach is going to be best to get this absolutely clean as a whistle and looking like new again. And then whatever works on this, I'm doing on the rest of it. <laughs> um, I do have a full technical manual that's coming. So that's got all the assemblies, the service and maintenance, the parts catalogue, parts numbers, all that stuff. That's on its way in here yet. I don't really want to start pulling apart until I can get my hands on that. But this is just a clean up job, so I'm going to see how good we can get it. Right then. Let's have a go with the parts washer first, see how that goes. So my rubbishy little parts washer has done me proud, it has to be said. This is, um, this is the main shaft that runs through it. I don't think you see this. That was covered in surface rust. Covered. And literally all I've done is shoved it in the parts washer. I've got um, a little stainless brush. You know, the, the fibers on it are actually quite, 
quite soft. So I use that to get into the thread. That's come up a tree. And all the rest of it, I just cleaned up with a piece of um, green scotch bright, Rubbing it real lightly just to get all the surface schmoo and nastiness and stuff off. Couple of little nicks in it around here, but nothing major. I mean, it's an old machine. I'm going to have to have a look at the serial number, see how old it actually is. It's going to have some bits of wear and tear, but that has come up like, well, pretty much like new. Let's give him a bit of a rinse. So I think this is probably the approach I'm going to be taking with the rest of it. Um, you know, I don't want anything massively abrasive on it because a lot of the surfaces are machined. Um, so, you know, you really don't want to be taking anything off of them. I just want to clean them up. And once I've got them cleaned, I mean, this whole thing is going to be covered in oil by the time I'm done anyway. Everything in here gets covered in oil. And that is something I will never apologise for. Um, and obviously that's going to help stop any rusting and stuff in future. But this is looking really good. Um, the, uh, there is a casting that was missing off the machine. And this has got one. I need to get the paint off of it. It's really thick. You can see where it's had this chunk out of the bottom. The paint thickness is really thick. So we'll get some paint stripper on that and see how we go. Because it's all going to get repainted anyway. Look at that. Again, some little marks on here where the coating's worn through. Again, this is on the outside. It's not, you know, any part of the machining. But that has come up lovely. Lovely and clean. Um, there's a couple of tiny little brass bushes. They're basically in here where the grub screws go. There's two little springs and on the inside there's these tiny little brass bushes that obviously sit up against the, uh, the shaft. So that just controls sort of how much resistance there is when you're, when you're resetting your dials and whatnot. Um, so I had a bit of a heart stopper when they fell out and I couldn't find them. <laughs> It was just the, the stream of the, the fluid in the parts washer that knocked them out. But luckily they went into the parts washer, so I managed to get them back again. But it's going to be little things like that that's going to trip me up. Um, so I don't think I'm going to be doing a whole hell of a lot of stripping until I get that manual. But this is looking really good. All the little bearings, they're all still in there. Literally, I just cleaned these and with, you know, rubbing my hands against it. It's not had any, you know, a, anything more abrasive than my thumb rubbing it. And that's just to get the, the old grease and everything else off, but they're lovely. we are reusing them. And they're just to help this spin on the shaft. That's literally it. That's all they do. So it's not like they're taking any massive loads. I mean, it's only like a plastic housing with captive bearings in it. But I reckon we've got an approach to cleaning all the rest of it up. I reckon this is going to work a treat. I know it's never going to look brand spanky new. But it is going to look respectable and looked after. Especially if I can get it all coming up like this. Right, let me um, just rinse the rest of these bits off. Then we'll get the paint stripper going and see what we can get that casting down to. Before everybody starts asking, <laughs> um, what have I got in the parts washer? It's just that stuff. Bought off eBay. It's just a concentrated degrease of parts washer fluid. Um, it says on here that you can dilute it one part of this to 20 parts water. I've got it about five to one in there. So, and, and that did a blinding job. I'm not bleeding, it's the paint off this. <laughs> this, there's just been 
sorted out by Jack next door. He does um, powder coating um, and car wrapping and various other bits and pieces. And he's got a big old vat full of uh, dichloromethane. I went asking, have you got a paintbrush I can nick so I can paint some of this, this stuff on it? Just to try and get the paint off and, and you know get it down to a decent finish. He's going, oh, I've got something much better than that. So what he does is he makes his own little concoction, which is dichloromethane and that. <laughs> so he's made me up a batch of it and I've just stuck this in, sort of agitating it around with a brush a bit. I don't want to be touching it because apparently you will just fall off. This has been in there for, I don't know, 30 seconds and it's all just coming off. <laughs> So, apparently this will last quite a long time as well. Look, it's all, it's just lifting it off. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to stick a lid on this when I've done this bit and I'll, I'll keep it to the side. Um, and we'll be using this to strip the rest of it down. But it, because our paint stripper these days um, is rubbish. Unless you get like the aircraft one. That's really quite good. Um, but because of all the environmentalists and all that sort of stuff, all the stuff that they used to put in the paint stripper that made it a really good thing to strip paint with, just, it don't really do anything now because, you know, they don't use it anymore. So we're going this route and we're going to see how we go. And to stop all the dichloromethane, from evaporate and we're just going to stick a lid on it. It's one of those um, uh, like takeaway tubs um, and apparently it can hold this stuff quite happy. I will be putting this in a metal tray <laughs> just in case it eats its way through the plastic. <laughs> anyway let's give that five minutes and then we'll come back and we'll see how we're doing. Right I've had the ch chuck off it that's going through the parts washing now. Uh, I'm literally just pulling bits off that's easy to get to and I can, I can sort. So, tail stop next. <laughs> right, I don't think that's standard. <laughs> I've shoved a bit of wood in it. Oh, we'll soon knock another one of them up on the mill. Uh, what else have we got here? So that's on Gibbs. Uh, tool paste can come out, I suppose. Do you just move? You should, because you're loose, but you're stuck. At least that one's metal. It is a bit ropey looking. But we're probably going to get a quick change tool post anyway. Still going to clean it up. And it's still got a tool in it, which would be handy. It's a forming tool, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Right. I think with this, it'll be a case of undo the Gibbs screws. Take the shim out. I think it should be all right. Still see all the markings on it, which is nice. That should also rotate. So how do you rotate then? How do you rotate? Is it that one? That one and that one.
Yes. Right, so that's going to go into a channel on the bottom, I'm guessing. So we'll have them out. what I thought it's just like a little angle bit that goes in here and then these screws come in and lock it so how far does that yeah so it's just pushing one of those little sort of plunger pins out so I'll back him off a bit so I ain't gonna lose that Trouble is, you can't see how the bloody thing goes together. I really need that data, but I can see the half nut, I can see the clutch assembly, I can see the how all this lot engages. So that's open, and then as you do this, it kind of clamps together either side of this. That's actually really snug. Um, but I can't see. Just rides up and down on a cone, and that also engages on here to drive the cross, the cross slide. So, how does the cross slide come off? Um, hmm. Here's me torch. All right. So that's the gearing. Uh, this is obviously forwards and reverse and literally just works on this rocker so change it that way push it in bring it back engages that way essentially it's just changing the direction of rotation using these two gears goes down to the same idler gear and then you've got your your other gears in the bottom here so the ones I've seen it's this gear which is the one that you swap out, it's a 33, but then you've got 100, you want 100 and 127. And there's normally a 56 one down here. I need to check with Tony. Tony is a very clever fella. He runs the lathes.co.uk website. He knows all about this gear change and uh, what I would need to swap out in order to be able to cut metric threads. But the, the gears themselves don't look bad. I mean, they're, they're a bit drier than I would like. You'd like to see them caked in grease. Um, 
There's a little bit of wear here and there, but there's, there's no big guffs or nastiness going on. And they're covered in sawdust anyway, so it's hard to sort of, I need to get them off and get them cleaned. So I'm going to be taking a picture of this. I'll send it over to Tony. He can point out what I'm going to need to change. And I can get some replacement gears on order. But this don't look bad. Yeah, not too shabby at all. Right. Let's shove that back in there so I don't lose it. Right, it's working. It is working. It's been in this mixture of goo for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, something like that. I don't really want to touch it. <laughs> but it is all coming off. Um, Yeah, all the paint's coming off, lovely. I was chatting with Jack. If I want to, I can just leave this in here overnight. Um, which... I might do yet, I don't really know. Um, let's grab that. But I figure if I at least scratch the surface with just a wire brush um, and kind of break through it a bit, it'll help it get the rest of it off. I'll chuck it back in the bath. And then I'll come back to it tomorrow. There's no plastic bits or anything. Now this is just like a, a lump of metal, basically. But it'll get the last little bits and pieces off of it and I'll give it a proper scrub up tomorrow. Paint it and then I can reassemble that um, cross slide feed, which would be nice. That'll give us an idea what the rest of it's going to come up like. It's going to be interesting using this on the main body of the thing though, that's stand and whatnot. I'm staying off, although it's not, you know, it's not a critical, I'm staying off with the machine faces. It's just the body of the thing that I'm scraping. But yeah, I reckon we're onto a winner here. Right, you can go back in there. come back tomorrow and see what you look like. Right. That is going in a metal tub just because I'm not happy with it just being in a plastic one. <laughs> just in case. I don't want that stuff going everywhere because it is horrible stuff. Um, clean my wire brush up. Stick a lid on it. Jobs are good. assembly all back together again it all moves nice it's not graunchy or grinding or anything else um, I've covered the whole thing in oil 
as I always do, but this is going to have to wait about for a bit whilst I get the rest of it done, obviously. Um, so all I'm going to do, I've got some of this low flat tubing, um, which is dead handy stuff really, just for bagging things up if you can get into the bloody stuff with oily fingers. <laughs> Come on! There we go. So, he's going to go in there. Ish. Like that. We'll um, have him off like that. Is it on? Is it on? So seal up one end. Another little square. And that's it, so it's all, it's all contained, it ain't going to get any grit or grinding dust or anything else on it. It's got oil in there to help keep it protected a little bit, Just give it a smooch about. Oh, the ends come off. There we go, that's done it. So it's all bagged up, it's all oiled up. It can quite happily stay there whilst I'm mucking about with other stuff. And it ain't gonna deteriorate. And all I'll do is, um, when I come time to do the, you know, paint the assembly, I'll have it apart, I'll take that casting off, um, just cause I am gonna be painting that bit. So it's in keeping with the rest of the machine. Um, so I'll have that off, give it a clean in the parts washer, rub it down with acetone, give it a paint, jobs are good. But that can just sit to one side and wait now. Right, this is just turned up. Um, and I'm open. This is the the manuals and stuff. Where did I get it from? There you go. Don't know if you can see that. Lays.co.uk. Tony Griffith. Um, very sound fella. He really knows his stuff as well. Let's not get it wet, eh? <laughs> right, bloody hell, how big is this? That's huge. Yeah, Tony Griffiths, sound fella. Right. God, it's got everything. This is an old inspection certificate. All oh, right, okay. So you've got the full history. It goes through all the metric and imperial thread cutting and which machines it applied to, tail stocks, headstock bearings, blah, 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 blah. That's my beastie. No, it's not my beastie. Is it my beastie? No, it ain't. I ain't got a gearbox. But it looks like it's got all the different, you know, all about the tools that you cut them and uh, the angles that you grind them at. Oh, this is excellent. Look 
Comet use. Best practice. All about metric thread indicators. So here it's got what size stud gear you need. Uh, the compound, the screw, a gearbox setting so you get your travel speeds right. It's got copies of all the old plates so you know what the ratios are that you're supposed to be having. So um, there's, uh, there's a screw gear, or stud gear, a compound gear, um, and then you need to have the gearbox in a certain position as well. So obviously it travels along the, the lead screw and it's got all that down here. It's got it in metric as well, which is ideal. Shows you the position of all the levers what teeth go where, what gears go where for cutting different stuff. Oh, this is blinding. Yeah, see, that's what I was expecting to see. You get this bigger gear over here. Um, which is the compound gear. Um, stud gear is the one up the top this little one here and then you got the compound gear oh this is gonna be so handy does it tell me how to pull it all apart <laughs> drawings of everything this whole thing oh you got a wiring diagram as well Matt will love that all the parts listings Complete with part numbers. I mean, this is about as comprehensive as you're ever gonna get. Instructions for move, removing of carol. Instructions for removal of carriage assembly. That could be handy. How to dismantle everything. We're gonna need that. <laughs> This is awesome. I think I got this for, was it 58 quid? But look, I mean, it is, it is everything. It's got all the features of it. It's got copies of the original um, Denford's engineering uh, manuals that would have went out with it. All the accessories you can get, all the different models. So A, U, B, C, U, D. D everything that is mega right I've got some studying to do <laughs> even got the training lathes look awesome right instructions for removal of carriage assembly unclamp tail stop and slide off end of bed did that Wine carriage unit down to tail stock end of bed. Well, I haven't done that. All right, done that. Remove gib strip from rear of saddle. Remove gib strip. All right, remove gib strip from rear of saddle. Well, that's gotta be that bit. Um, unfortunately, I'm a metric fella. And I'm willing to bet this is all going to be imperial, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's all imperial. So we're down to adjustables, unfortunately, which I hate, but I need to get an, uh, an imperial spanner set, I think. Course the nuts are coming off together.
Right, I've just stuck the um, that little supporting bracket back on the end of the the lead screw just because I don't want anything to monkey with it. Let's have a look at this. Um, where can I? So that's all that's inside it. So that's just the lock. So the, the way you clamp the, um, you know, stop the saddle from moving is just with this bit here. So that just goes up and it clamps on the ways. This is the feed for the, um, you know, to engage the lead screw. So basically as you move this lever here, it clamps down onto the lead screw. You can see that. This is obviously, Oh, it's keyed as well. Oh, of course it would be. Duh. How good is that? That is so simple. And it's nice and clean in here as well. I think everything's just held in with circlips. Well, like you've got these two screws here and stuff. But what I'm going to end up doing, I think, I'll take some pieces. It's just mucky as hell. It's dry as anything. Um, there has been grease in it. You can see that. But... Um, yeah, all, all sort of need to renew in. Under is the clutch. So that's obviously what engages this. So as you wind the clutch in, it brings this to a standstill. Um, uh, and it basically drives the cross slide, which I need to figure out how that goes, because I can't see the, the, I don't know how the powered cross feed works. I think it's this one here because um, this would be on the lead screw yeah and then you get the clutch that comes through that engages on this back gear down the back here that I'm wiggling a little bit of play in it um, that drives this one and that's what drives the cross slide it's such a simple thing it's, just, I mean, it's built thick and heavy but it's about as simple as it gets it just all needs I'm going to pull it all apart I'm going to clean it all up it's all going to go through that rust-oleum stuff to get rid of all this surface schmoo and nastiness that's going on. I'll paint all the castings and everything, and when I reassemble it, it's all just going to get packed out with grease. Um, and that will do as well. There is a ton of sawdust in here, though. Tons of sawdust. And it's all kind of got in with the old grease and stuff, and it's just sort of formed this paste. Uh, and that's kind of why I don't want to be running it until I've stripped and cleaned everything. Because there's big gobs of it in there. And I just don't want to damage or wear anything out prematurely. So we'll keep that assembly as one. I don't think anything's going to fall off it, is it? Um, no, it looks like everything's captive. So he can go to one side and we'll sort him out. All right, we'll start on this end next. I want to get all these gears off and we'll try and have the screw cutting gearbox off and the back there yeah all the back gear assembly and stuff off as well so we'll start here I haven't got any imperial spanners which I'm kicking myself for now so I'm down to an adjustable and I hate these things but they do have their place right, make sure it's really tight Right, that ain't gonna go anywhere. Uh, what have we got? Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Penny. So I'll stick him in there, because this is soft. There we are. So he's loose. Um, stick him in the bottom there. nice and tight there we go so he's loose um, just, uh, might as well do him as well Oh. 
I didn't rule on my penny. <laughs> The weirdest belt I think I've ever seen in my life. It all seems to be slotted and riveted. <laughs> How odd. Um, well, I can't see any real damage to it, but it does look antique as hell. It does look antique. -y. It goes around this pulley at the bottom as well. So, it goes around this, this top shaft up here on this pulley. Um, I'm gonna take a picture of this. Yeah, mostly because of the cobwebs. <laughs> but I think if I, does that go through a slot? Oh, it's one either side. So you do have to split it or take the belt off, which you can't get it off that end. You ain't going to get it off this end. So the belt is going to need to be split. Um, I think what I might end up doing is just cutting that belt off because it, it does look a little bit ropey and that's the main drive belt. Um, so I'll cut, I'm going to make sure I can get a spare first. If I can, I'm going to cut that off. And then we can have all this assembly out the bottom of it. What does that do? Oh, that's just the lever, isn't it? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to make sure I can get another one of those belts. I'm sure it won't be an issue. If I can, I'm just going to cut that one off. Then I'll have the assembly out the bottom here which should be pretty easy, I think. There's just some mounting bolts on the hinge on the back. Undo this. Actually, the pin probably just comes straight out. It looks like it's just a screw thread. So we'll disconnect that. We can have all this lot out the bottom and we should be good. We might as well take the belt off now, actually. Uh, Right, I've decided just to cut this off, which I've done. Because I'm going to get another one. It's got like mouldy bits. So I think it's leather or something. But it's really weird. I've never seen a belt like this. But it seems to be riveted on one side. And it goes through three layers of, you know, these leather links. And then on the top end, it's slotted. So I'm guessing it all kind of goes together. somehow i don't know how um so that you know the pin once you get everything all lined up and whatnot then the uh the the pin can come out i've never seen one like it it is a bit ropey they're not that expensive i can get another one so i'm just getting another one because this is the main drive belt 
um, and I want it to be right. I'm keeping it <laughs> just so I can check the length on the new one when it gets here. Um, but that'll be one of the last things to get fitted anyway. So we can go at one side as well. Right, I can get the bolt loosened on this set. There's two bolts that run up here. Um, this one uh, is buried in this channel. Essentially, it's just a clamp. So you've got a piece of metal on the underside, bolts into the housing for the, the gearbox, and it just clamps it to the waist. I can get to that one easy enough. You can hear that one's loose. The one on this side though is a massive pain. I need to get a set of Imperial spanners because I can't get an adjustable in there and have enough room to actually turn it, you know, to, to get any purchase on it to turn it, um, to get it off. Right, so the only numbers I can find is on the inside cover um, that covers up all the stud gear and thread cutting gears and all that malarkey. And it's this number here, DEH3656-329. I can't find any plates or plaques or any numbers anywhere else. That's the only one that I can find. So I've gone through Lays.co.uk website and had a look at it. Um, and I believe this machine was made between January 1976 and January 1977. Um, if anybody does know if that really is the serial number, um, if they could drop a comment and just let us know. But I've been all over this and I can't see anything. So I'm assuming that's it. It would, it would kind of sound right, but you know, it would be just really nice to know a little bit more about the machine. Right, so that's it for this one. <laughs> Basically, I've just pulled everything apart, in essence, in just the like, main assemblies. So. You know, the thread cutting gearbox, I've got the um, saddle and the, the cross slide over there, we've got the tail stock, it's just big assemblies have been removed. I do need to get myself some Imperial Spanners though, that's going to make things a lot easier, I'll get them later on. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's got to be it for this one, it's basically just the tear down. What comes after this is prettying it up and rebuilding it. And what I'll probably do is look like a video for each of the big chunks, so there'll be one video just on the screw cutting gearbox, another one just on the headstock. And I'll show you how I pull it all apart and what I check and how I put it back together and grease it, blah, 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 yeah, all that other stuff. Um, by no means is this my trade. I'm a home gamer. This is just me having a go at fixing this little old lathe up and turning it to a former state of glory, basically, so I can use it and it's just gonna last. Um, but I think it's gonna serve me well. Um, so that's what it'll be, it's you know, video for each of the major chunks and that way if you've got one or you end up getting one and want to do the same, at least you've got a little bit of reference material because I can't find anything on it apart from one fella and he seems to have stopped doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you ever so much for joining us, hope you keep it well and staying safe and we'll see you again soon. Adios. <laughs>